Pat Buchanan, former uh, aide to uh, Presidents Nixon and Reagan and a former presidential candidate himself, has, has a great column today, Exploiting the Capitol Riot to Kill Trump. I'll read you the lead. Donald Trump has stumbled and fallen, and the establishment is not going to let slip this last opportunity to stomp him and his movement to death. It's it's so true, and I just wanted to get his his comments on this and uh, how how this this is unprecedented this this level of derangement in in uh, American political history. Pat, this uh, this this makes the uh, Nixon derangement syndrome uh, pale in comparison, does it not? Bring that mic closer. No, I've never seen anything like it. They're going to what? Uh, they demanded that Pence call the Twenty <laughs> Fifth Amendment Committee to to order and, and remove Trump, and if he didn't do it, they're going to impeach him. And I guess uh, since McConnell comes back on the day before the inauguration, they're going to have a 24-hour trial, sort of like Andrew Vashinsky used to have, I suppose. <laughs> Star Chamber. Uh, it gives new meaning. You know, I, I said yesterday, Pat, this is kind of like uh, the Stuarts digging up the body of Oliver Cromwell after they were restored to the monarchy, isn't it? <laughs> and trying a dead man in, in abstention? Exactly. I, I mean, what what is the point here? Well, that's just that's just it. I don't I mean some of them. Who's it? Clyburn says we'll wait for about a hundred days, and then we'll impeach him. That's May. He'll be out of office for three months by then. And they're going to impeach him. But doesn't he have to be president of the United States to be impeached? Right. That's the. How that's do you the... impeach a private citizen? <laughs> If, if that's the if that's the standard, Pat, you ran you ran for president and twice in 1992 and 1996, you could be impeached, right? <laughs> well, yeah, but you sure I could have been impeached back then, <laughs> but I didn't quite make it. <laughs> I, I, have you ever seen anything like this? I've never seen. No, I haven't seen anything like it at all. It's just the hysteria. Look, and you got the business community is defunding the Republican Party and they're deplatforming Trump and deplatforming other people and shutting down websites. I mean and talking as though this is, you know, the this is nineteen seventeen and and they're they're headed for the winter palace. <laughs> yeah, I, I just uh, I just see a, a story here on the internet. Listen to this. Uh Mayor Jim Kenney He's the fool who runs Philadelphia. He's, you know, he puts in these draconian lockdowns and then goes over to New Jersey to have a nice dinner with his family. Another one of those Democrats, right? He is asking for tips. If anybody knows, any, if any of the 30,000 employees of the city of Philadelphia went down to the rally last week, he's asking for tips publicly. Can you imagine, Pat, imagine this. He's going to find any employees. <laughs> Pat, imagine go go back to your Up days in the Nixon the in, in the Nixon White House. Frank Rizzo is the mayor of Philadelphia, the guy they hate so much. They took down his statue. This uh, he was a former police commissioner who became the mayor. He, he didn't He's get along with the he, I, he didn't get along with the Black Panthers, to put it mildly. Suppose Frank Rizzo had had a press conference in 1970 and said they had a big uh, the hippies had a big uh, anti-war rally down in washington i want the names of anybody uh that works for the city of philadelphia who went down to that rally what would have what would have happened to him they would have they would the, the media exactly would have right. had a heart attack you're exactly right they would have been i mean it would have been it's it's absurd he's asking thirty thousand members of the trying to find out if any of them went down to dc yeah yeah brother how about this one? I got it. This is another headline today, Pat. I'm just, this is just unfolding in, uh, as we're on the air, Chuck Todd, former aide to, 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 uh, Harkin, Tom Harkin, the stolen valor Senator from Iowa and his, his wife works for uh, Bernie Sanders or did Chuck Todd famed journalist MSNBC will not play Trump's comments in Texas today due to the concerns that he will be used as a rallying cry. This is President of the United States. This is uh, Chuck Todd, MSNBC. Yeah. The yeah. start. I mean, what is going on here? It's like the in Twitter. The President of the United States is talking. We won't carry it, and we're we're going to impeach him and make sure he can't run again because otherwise people might vote for it. 
Yeah. I and mean, this is astonishing. You know, that's, consider that, Howie. They say they want to impeach him, even if it means when he's a private citizen, so he won't be allowed to run again. There's a real vote of confidence in the American people, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, now you can, it's like those Latin American countries. You know, Evo Morales is one of those guys. Yeah. He can't be on the ballot. <laughs> I, I know. I, I know the third world has come to the United States. It's uh, you know they really Trump has has brought to the surface the real feelings of some of these people and their real character and their real paranoia. Yeah, I know, and, and they're and they're uh, yeah they're they're paranoia about the American people, about those seventy five million people who uh, <laughs> and and anybody and it's not just Trump is it's it's not just Trump is the enemy or you know. Uh, Josh Hawley and uh, Ted Cruz should be put on the terrorist watch list. Did you see that one? The chairman of the uh, Homeland Security Committee in the House said that. They should be put on the watch list for terrorism because they did the same thing that the Democrats do. They objected to the certification of the Electoral College. How about Colin Kaepernick? Pat, I'm going to give you, what I'm going to read you, I'm going to read you his tweet uh, after the, uh, after when the riots were starting. When civility leads to death, revolting is the only logical reaction. The cries for peace will rain down, and when they do, they will land on deaf ears because your violence has brought this resistance, meaning the riots. We have the right to fight back. You know what the Twitter did when, uh, when uh, he, he, he posted that, uh, that incitement to insurrection? You know what Jack, Jack Rasputin Dorsey did, Pat? He sent him three million bucks. Three million bucks. Amazing. Got all this. You know, you got you got capitalism, big capitalism, moving in that direction. Holy! I mean, they're chopping off the Republican Party. It's just astonishing what's going on. I mean, the panic. It's look. This is what are we? Almost a week after this event now, and these people haven't you know absorbed it yet. I know. I, I loved. I loved your quote from LBJ in your column today. What, LBJ's advice for Republicans, it's pretty good advice for anybody who's in a, uh, a maelstrom like this, isn't it? Jam. He said, yeah. He said, you know, uh, you know, give me the opening lines again. Just hunker down. Hunker down like a mule in a hailstorm and let the wild wind blow and the sun will come out again in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that may be the and wisest thing I've ever heard times. him say. I, I, that he, <laughs> that he ever did he used say. To say it, you know, during the Vietnam era, just before we went into the White House with Nixon, you know, they'd all come to him and say the demonstrators are all doing this, and they're all, you know, you're not, you can't make it onto a single campus. Uh, he said, "Well, just you know, hunker down like a mule in a hailstorm. This is going to pass too." <laughs> yeah, but what, what would Nixon? What would Nixon do if he were in this situation? Do you think, other than hunkering down in a, like a, a mule in a hailstorm? Well, you know, Nixon was sort of—he had these firestorms occur like this, you know, you know, in the Saturday, so-called Saturday Night Massacre. I remember I was—I was with him in the White House, then, and I went over to have dinner with my buddies when they came, uh, who were in town, you know, from St. Louis, and I said we just got rid of Archibald Cox and. Uh, and Richardson and Ruckel's house, and Tuesday morning there'll be impeachment resolutions in the House. But with Trump, he's far down that road, far down that road himself. But I will say that, I mean, Trump handles these things in terms of not being flustered as good as anybody I can imagine. Yeah, he he actually delivered a pretty good speech today down on the border, even if MSNBC didn't want to cover it, you know? He, well, he, it's, you know, you hear, true, you hear the word coming when Biden's in, the big move for the border comes. They're, they're going to change. These subjects are going to change pretty quickly. But what gets me is, what does they think they're going to do? They're going to impeach him, and they're going to try and convict him in one day. Or they just want it on the record. Why don't they go for three impeachments? Don't you think this is just a fundraising uh, gimmick for the uh, for the Democrats? It's partly fundraising. It's partly trying to get the Republicans, I think, to, they're on record to vote one way or the other on the issue because all the Democrats will vote for impeachment. Although some of them got to be feeling that this is a stupid thing to do, that 
I mean, there's that conservative congresswoman out here, Democrat, relatively conservative, who said, you know, defund the cops, defund the police, all that nonsense. Got a lot of my friends killed in this last election. But I think that's what the Democrats want. They want to get it on the record that he was impeached twice. But it's <laughs> Trump will be two and oh. <laughs> he, he beat the first one and they folded on the second <laughs> I know, and, it, and it, every every time they move against him, it, it's more uh, more ridiculous than the last one, isn't it? Well, it really this is this is just absurd. I mean, you're talking about again impeaching him, and have, what do they think? McConnell's going to rush to town and you know get John Roberts on the phone and tell him to get over here. Yeah, it's I know. E- even and if Dershowitz is warming up in the bullpen. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. When, when the, how, how soon do you think? Do you think the Republicans come come back in twenty twenty two? I would think they they're going to come think, back pretty strong. I think they're I think they're going to come back very strong. One reason is, uh, I mean, look, there's been a, you talk about a cover up. I mean, whatever you say about Joe Biden, he has really lost more than a step or two. And when you get him back hit back here, and you got this COVID thing is exploding again, and you got the economy and is in trouble. And you got all these crazies that want to impeach Trump, you know, run him down in New York or Florida or wherever to impeach him again. And all these problems. And I think people are going to say, look, you know, they didn't, these, these guys came in and they had everything and they blew it. I don't know a first term except for FDR. He gained seats in his first term after his first two years. But almost never does it happen that you I think Reagan lost about 26 seats, I think. Even Nixon, who did really very well, lost about 10 seats in the House in 1970. So I think you're gonna, there's going to be a real loss of the Democrats, I think, in the House and the Congress in 2022. Yeah. They almost lost control of the House. You know? They, they, lost, know a, they, did. they lost a bunch of seats that they should have, that they should have won. And, uh, yeah, we, you know, the real tragedy is we lost those two seats down there in Georgia. Yeah, I don't think the intramural fights helped that at all. No, no, they didn't. You think Trump will run again in twenty twenty four, Pat? Last question. Uh, I think he'll consider it, but I think it's this uh, the this post election in this last week. I think probably precludes the fact that he can be nominated and win both. Uh, he's got a, still got an enormous following of tens or scores of millions behind him who are with him all the way, and he's got veto over the next nominee. But whether he can make himself the nominee and run and win after four years, I really wonder after this. I think he, I don't think he'd get many endorsements from the establishment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of an they're understatement. They're take care of that with impeachment and conviction, <laughs> so then he can't run. <laughs> all right pat buchanan always all a pleasure right. to talk to you and uh, happy new year you take it easy my friend thanks that's pat buchanan former presidential candidate former aide to the old man as he calls richard nixon and uh, ronald reagan as well hit refresh on your dinner routine in 2021 with hello fresh right now you could take advantage of their limited time new year's sale and see why hello fresh is america's number one meal kit. If it's not your resolution, maybe it should be to get a better diet in 2021 and vary your diet. Make it more exciting to prepare dinner. Don't just do the same uh, dinner that you've been doing for years and years and years just because it's easy and you know where it is in the aisle of the supermarket, et cetera, et cetera. Do something different and something that's good for you, more healthy. HelloFresh is the way to go. HelloFresh gives you simple ingredients, simple recipes, and fresh ingredients sourced directly from growers and delivered to your door contact-free. With more than 23 weekly recipes, there's something for everyone to enjoy, including family-friendly, vegetarian, and low-calorie options. Say goodbye to never-ending meal planning and prepping. HelloFresh recipe cards are easy to follow with simple steps and pictures. You can get meals on the table in as little as 20 minutes. Plus, by skipping the grocery store, you can save up to 40% on groceries, cut food waste by 25%, and save time. So I you bet have- people are going to be able to save more than that, Howie, with the new administration coming in. The cost of energy and travel is going to go up, so the cost of your food is going to go up as well. 
Right. And you don't have to worry about masks. You don't have to worry about uh, ice in the parking lots. You don't have to worry about cold walking through the, uh, the parking lot to get to the supermarket. None of that stuff. Save time so you have more time to spend with your loved ones. HelloFresh is a great way to go. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code HOWIE10 for 10 free meals across four boxes, including free shipping on your first box during HelloFresh's New Year's sale. For a limited time only, go to HelloFresh.com and use code HOWIE10 for 10 free meals. HelloFresh.com. I'm Howie Carr. You're tuned into the Howie Carr Radio Network. 